Hey everyone, my name is Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. I'm Kathy Azar from Catherine Azar Photography, and this morning we have with us Mark, the Senior Product Manager for Epson and their scanning department. So the, what we're going to go over today is the V800 and V850 professional line scanners that they just introduced this week. First question that we have, number one, thank you for being here today, we appreciate My it. Pleasure. Uh, tell us about the different lines of scanners. I know you have scanners from the very small document all the way up to a professional one for a professional photographer. Tell us about sure. those different lines. Uh, we break up the line pretty much into two groups, the photography scanners and the document scanners. Uh, first, the document scanners range from our very small portables for single sheets at a time all the way up to the high volume scanners that might run at uh, 65 pages a minute to go through a lot of paper very quickly. That's a lot of pages. That's a lot of pages. <laughs> it's for people that really need to capture a lot of information off of the paper mm -hmm. and get that stored digitally. Uh, our photo line we have from our retail scanners, the V37 and V370, um, uh, up through some of the more advanced uh, amateur mm -hmm. ranges uh, up to the professional scanners uh, that we're showing here. Mm -hmm. uh, plus we have the large format scanners that will go up to 11 by 17 uh, rich. Okay. I don't think we, I don't think I've ever seen one of those. We might have to do another video and talk about those <laughs> at some point too. Be happy to, <laughs> to do that. So is there any reason anymore to have a dedicated film scanner? Well, we don't think so. We've made the quality of the image scan from the V850 so high uh, that for almost every use, you can take 35 millimeter uh, uh, transparencies and negatives and scan them at such high quality that the difference is uh, immaterial. But it always depends on what you're going to do with the image after you scan it. There are certainly some very, very large enlargements that require some of the extra uh, performance you can get from a dedicated, from the high end dedicated film scanners that typically cost uh, $2,000, $4,000 each. Uh, there's generally no need to go that high. So have you seen an uptick in people using these? for film, given that film is kind of making a little bit of a comeback? Um, we have seen this part of the market very stable because our primary market are those that, that have uh, tens of thousands of originals in film that they're trying to capture in digital so that uh, that market has been very, very stable for us. You mentioned film. Um, tell us about the different media that can be scanned. At the small end, we use 35 millimeter negatives and transparencies, uh, chromes, okay. um, either in strip form or mounted slides. Okay, and in strip form, you said now this one of the new features of this is you can get up to six negatives on a, inside of that strip now. Was right. that a change? Well, no, well, it, the, the film holder is new, but mm -hmm. that part has actually been held constant. Okay. The new film holders are much stiffer than the old ones. That was one of the things we learned from our last product line. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the professional users wanted it to, to be one of the film holders stiffer so that they could get more consistent results. Mm -hmm. The old film, film holders had four strips of six uh, images each. Mm -hmm. The new ones have three which allows us to make it stiffer. Okay. Just as important is we have really simplified the ability to uh, manage the height of the film holder as it sits on the scan bed. Mm -hmm. So we have these slide controls that allow us to uh, very precisely adjust uh, the height above the scan bed for the uh, film. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we have added anti-Newton ring plates that flatten out the negatives when you uh, place them in the film holders. Okay. So it's a much, much better film holder than what we had before. Very good. So um, what does changing the height do for the images? Brings it into focus. Okay. Uh, if you make a scan of an image that you know is sharp and you find that it's soft, uh, the first thing you'll want to do is adjust the height and okay. see if you can bring it in uh, better. It's usually for uh, uh, negatives or transparencies that, uh, that might have a little bit more curve than, uh, than some others. Uh, this allows you the, the precision, the adjustment to get it exactly gotcha. where you need it. Uh, so negatives, transparencies, what's the largest size negative you can scan? Well, let me qualify that first. The film holders we have will cover 35 millimeter in both those configurations that mm -hmm. I mentioned. We can go medium format, strips of uh, 120. Okay. Um, and we can do single images of four by five. Okay. Um, that's using the film holders, but mm -hmm. you can also put uh, negatives or transparency directly on the scan bed and go up mm -hmm. to eight by 10. Okay. The difference is when you're using the film holders, you can scan up to 6,400 DPI and if you're using the full size uh, for an 8x10, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, your maximum resolution is 4800. Okay. Now, you, there's probably no reason ever to scan more than 4800, those, yep. those larger images. So how do we choose the right settings when we're 
setting our, you know, we're ready to scan, we've, you know, purchased an 800 or whichever machine they're going to buy, how do we choose those right settings to get optimal quality? And talk about a little bit about that DPI setting, because sure. normally you're thinking when we're printing, eh, you know, DPI and I'm printing, it's say for an Epson printer, you know, Eddie had told us in the past year, 270 DPI, right. 180 is a minimum, or 320 on the high end. How does that work? You need to know uh, when you're making the scan, what is your intended use down the road. Okay. And you'll want to scan at the highest resolution that you will need. Mm -hmm. And the way you determine that is, is the, the simple mathematics of taking that printed uh, um, uh, dots per inch mm -hmm. and figuring out what that negative needs to be scanned at to give you the correct dimensions on okay. that final print. Okay. Um, so if you're going 300 DPI and you're doing an, an eight by 10, uh, that will tell you um, uh, the, uh, the the resolution okay. uh, just by the uh, eight times three hundred. All right, that makes sense. Makes sense. So uh, there's two different versions of the scanner. What are the differences between the V800 and the V850? Sure. The V850 has all of the little extras we know how to do to make that image quality better. So the the structure of the two scanners are identical, mm -hmm. but the V850 Pro has. Uh, anti-reflection coatings on the optics and high reflection coatings on the mirrors okay. uh, that simply eke out that last little bit of image quality that we can get uh, from that system. It will also scan a little bit faster because we know the processor uh, understands that the data coming in is cleaner, that there's less uh, processing to do okay. to make sure that that image is very precise. So we can run it a little bit faster because of that. Okay. When can we pick one up? When can we buy one? The V850 actually starts shipping uh, this week. It'll be in our uh, reseller partners um, in the sometime the first week of November. Okay. And uh, the V800 will follow about a month behind. So right about the beginning of December, those will be uh, okay. in the stores. Christmas presents. Yeah, exactly. Now, some of the features, you mentioned software. Some of the features that have been around forever, there's also a difference in the software between the two of them, right? There's a isn't there a micro difference between the, the quality of software or the... There are some additional yeah. features in the software for okay. the V850 Pro. Both of them uh, have, uh, with the product, a copy of Silverfast SE. The 850 Pro uh, gets the uh, uh, Silverfast SE Plus. Okay. version, so it adds additional features like uh, uh, Kodachrome uh, uh, conversion and uh, multi-imaging support. Okay, uh, and one of the one of the old features, as we talked about, that I mentioned, because I kind of threw you off on it, was that auto crop on a line, but someone that's new to a scanner, they might not realize that you can put three or four photos on that scanning bed, and it'll automatically crop them and straighten them for you. Sure, the, when you're scanning prints, you just lay them down on the flat bed, you can lay down multiple prints, and it will scan each one individually and gives you separate uh, nice. JPEG images if that's what you choose, mm -hmm. that's the format. Uh, if you have strips of negatives, you can have uh, three strips of six, so it'll take, uh, it'll scan those, each one individually at full resolution, which gives you 18 mm -hmm. uh, images. And then with the slides, you can have uh, 12 images uh, on the uh, uh, carrier and give you 12 separate yep. images there. Obviously the goal there is to minimize the amount of time that you're actually working with it and concentrating on doing other stuff. Exactly, yeah. and, and to that end, with the V850 Pro, you actually get two complete sets of the film holders, so you can be preparing one set while the first one is scanning, again, okay. just to increase the throughput. What's the average time for a scan of, say, a, you know, full set of 18 negatives? Yeah, it depends completely on the resolution that you need. Um, a, the, uh, yesterday I scanned 12 slides at uh, 2400 DPI, and I think it took seven minutes. Okay. Uh, when you go up to the uh, the very high resolutions, so the 6400 DPI, it takes much longer. It takes okay. 20 minutes per scan. Okay. And that obviously makes a difference with the speed of your computer, right? The faster the computer, the faster the scan, or does that not make a difference? Not really, because most okay. of the computers can keep up with uh, with what we do. Okay. And Mac and PC? Can, Mac uh, and PC, absolutely. Is that, is that the only two? Do you have any Linux capability or anything like that? Oh, we understand drivers? that there are third parties that have created Linux drivers, but oh, good. from Epson we have the uh, Mac and PC. Okay. Very good. Um, we talked about ship date. Um, any difference? Oh, uh, the uh, the LED lamp. That's another oh, yeah. feature that's relatively new, I think, in the last few years. Well, yeah, we've been converting uh, all of our scanners one at a time from the uh, fluorescent illumination to LED. Uh, that does a couple of things. Uh, one, it eliminates the warm-up time. So mm -hmm. today it takes 
uh, for the fluorescent uh, illumination it takes about 40 seconds for that uh, fluorescent light to get to the point where it's stable in color. Uh, the LED is stable uh, in le much less than a second. Okay. Um, wow. So it eliminates the wait time to prepare for the scan. Um, also, it reduces the power consumption. Uh, that's not, these don't draw a lot of power, but it is a little bit less. And from a manufacturing point of view, it eliminates mercury from the process. Uh, environmental concerns are very important to Epson. So uh, that has been always one of the things that we try and do is eliminate okay. the, uh, uh, the mercury. Okay, very good. Uh, if you were a crayon, what color would you be? Oh, geez. <laughs> well, I'm like, see, I, I was born long enough ago that there was still a flesh-colored... Uh, a crayon, uh, wow. yes. I remember <laughs> and, that, too. And that is about my skin tone. Yeah. So I understand why Crayola had to eliminate the, the name of that. They, they, they couldn't call it flesh because there's such a wide range of yeah, yeah, flesh yeah. colors. But I'm the original flesh color. <laughs> name something always in your refrigerator. Almond milk. I do! Chocolate <laughs> almond milk, I put it in my coffee! <laughs> Favorite thing about your company? Stability. Very good. How long have you been with Epson? Uh, I've been, this is actually my second time there. I've been there a total of 10 years over two periods, starting in 1996. Okay. Any, very... irrational, feel, any irrational fears? I think all my fears are very <laughs> rational. <laughs> I, 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 I don't fear uh, heights but I fear falling off of them, and so I stay away from the edge. Very good, and if you're hitting the ground. I, I, no, because I don't come close to the edge. So I thought of this question as we were driving up here. Oh no. McGee or MacGyver? I guess I have to say MacGyver, because okay. I always like to solve problems with whatever is in Okay, it. but McGee, that's what McGee does too, but he does it digitally. I guess I'm more of a hardware guy. <laughs> okay. Uh, good answer. Yep, very good answer. Cats or dogs? <laughs> dogs. Do you have a dog? No, but I'm allergic to cats, so it really narrows it down. <laughs> good answer. Uh, who's the photographer in your family? Me. Me. Absolutely. Okay. What do you shoot with? Um, well, I'm, I'm between good cameras. I still have all my film stuff. It was all Canon. Um, so you're scanning at home then? We're yeah, scanning yeah. at work to test out. So you're oh, no, I'm scanning at home because I was working. able to bring home one of the things. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, I, I had these long before they went on the market. So. <laughs> I'm sure you did. <laughs> Very good. Well, I don't think, was there any more you wanted to throw at him, Kathy? No, we, we, were, we learned about your office mascot earlier, <laughs> yes. and we think that was great. You're the only one so far, I think, who has had one, except maybe someone who had a there dog, was a in dog. The office. Yeah, yeah, that was exactly. it. But we like that. That was it. Julio, that's a great name. Julio. Yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to I try and stay away from Julio. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. scary. I'm irrational. Fear <laughs> of people in owl costumes. <laughs> That's awesome. He should have been here for Halloween. That would have been perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should have had him in a cage somewhere. You don't know that he's not coming. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There you go. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting. See ya.